Anybody who has followed my channels for long enough knows that I, I like animals. I've got a shirt here that uh, I got in the, ma in the mail today, which has all, all four of our cats on it. So, yeah. Um, it's one of those ads that pops up. Hey, you want a cat-themed shirt? Sure, I do. So, I, I, I do. And, and it goes back to when I was a little kid. So, before I'd ever had cats, uh, I had a, had a couple of dogs by then. We had Noof, and we had tippy and i'm trying to think i remember the first time i went to the aquarium though and that was back when skeena the whale the the, the killer whale was there and, and you'd have skeena doing doing tricks and things like that and uh you know skeena was was very popular and and killer whales i understand that the movie blackfish came along a long time later and people got really mad at killer whales being in in captivity but seeing them and, and being there and understanding the, the, the perils of, of certain animals, certain fish, and technically um, whales or mammals. So seeing, seeing the, the perils they're in and seeing how relatively friendly they can be, and, and it all makes a difference. It, it humanizes um, the, the, the issue. And now the Vancouver Aquarium today, after 64 years, is closing its doors to the public. And there is no guarantee of, of it reopening to the public. And I've seen people saying, well, they're just they're just reorganizing. No, this is this is dire. They had $3 million in costs per month. Uh, during COVID, they've got it down to about $1 million a month. But they're laying off 209 staff. So to people affected, you know, you have, have my sympathies in this. That's, you know, this is a, a rough time for everybody. They have 70,000 animals. And this is where people say, well, they, they shouldn't. And it's just wrong. And you should just, we shouldn't have any animals in captivity. If we did not have animals in captivity, I would argue that my generation wouldn't have thought twice about what was going on and the extinction that was going on within uh, whale populations and it brought great attention to that where we realized that these are magnificent animals and right now we're dealing with potential extinction events with with sharks where now sharks are being hunted because people are like ah screw the sharks and that's that's a really horrible way to look at it because sharks generally aren't aggressive that's why they have these swimming with sharks things that they do now where certain sharks you can swim them they don't care if you're there even a great white doesn't just attack humans and if they do they they don't generally eat people because we don't taste good to them they just sometimes think that somebody who's wearing a scuba suit looks like a seal because they can't see very well but you know now we're in a position where where sharks very well could end up being you know finned to extinction just take the fin off and drop them back in the water it's just it's awful but without conservation efforts this is the kind of stuff that would just happen and we wouldn't think anything of it and the vancouver aquarium for all the negativity people throw at it and i've seen the pickets and i've seen people get mad at it vancouver aquarium has been very very uh, very much at the forefront when it comes to conservation, when it comes to animal rescue. So they get these animals, they rescue them, and and they very, very few can be released back into the wild. It's sort of like, you know, I have these cats. Oh, well, let's just let them out. Uh, there'd be coyotes waiting right there going, thanks. Um, you have any other cats in there? Or, all right, we'll just we'll kill these ones and move on. And and this, you know, this is, this is something that, again, with, with animals, once they're tamed, We've all watched the nature programs where they nurse an animal back to health and they go, huh, it's uh, too friendly with humans. I've got to put it down. And you're like, seriously, I just watched this animal get nursed back to health and I ain't going to put it down. That's why I've stopped watching nature programs for the most part. But the Vancouver Aquarium did a lot of really good things. And I thought they, they went, underwent this huge smear campaign years back that I didn't say a whole lot about because honestly, I, I didn't need the flack, but uh, they did a lot. They did a lot to bring attention to uh, the the plight of some of these animals and and some of these fish that were um, being hunted to extinction or fished to extinction and we will we'll just go through, just just drift net it just drift net drift net everything and we'll just we'll just pick up everything in the ocean don't worry the ocean will bounce back it's pretty big and and then sometimes certain areas don't um, the costs are one million dollars a month and this is why when I see people saying uh, they're not going to actually just shut down they may have to. Uh, one million dollars a month is a lot, and laying off two hundred and nine staff that helps, but that you've got to think that's what. Let's just say it's a thousand dollars a person. 
you're still looking at well over a half a million dollars a month. And then it's a matter of having the the income. So they're still looking for fundraising. And I know I, I, I promoted their fundraiser when it was going on and they were selling off masks. But the donations of about $600,000 from people who wanted to support the, uh, the Vancouver Aquarium it only covered like two and a half, about almost three weeks of their costs. It, it didn't didn't cover enough. And this was after they reopened and they did that with the physical distancing and with all the mandates in place to try to make it as safe as possible. Ticket sales had been down 80%. So there weren't they weren't getting the, the gate receipts they needed to stay open. I have been to this aquarium many, many times. It is, it is very useful for teaching kids about uh, various marine wildlife and... Uh, the otters are as cute as otters can get, and we all know how cute otters can get. And uh, it is it is a shame that it is closed because there is no guarantee it's going to reopen to the public. When they say we're reevaluating the business model, that's one way to put it. Another way to put it is they can't afford to be open to the public, and we don't know how long you know the economic slowdown is going to go on. Um, so honestly, the, the what I I think is you know I'll, I'll do what I what I can to help out I'll, I'll look into ways that I can support them over the next few months and I'll do what I can to support and I'm not gonna post it all over social media because that's not what I do um you know I, I I said in a video at one point I had maxed out charitable donations last year and I don't crow about charitable I think it's just it's it's ignorant um if you want to give money to charity do it I, I don't need to know unless it's a charity that people don't know about which is why I'm doing this video um, because I think the Vancouver Aquarium does some really good things and I understand that there's there's a negative connotation to the aquarium I understand there are people who pick at it and and oh it needs to close down okay there's 70,000 animals that you can't just open the doors and go fly just swim go you, you can't and they haven't had a killer whale in there for a long time because of you know the whole blackfish thing and we all understand the blackfish thing was good and it was great that they exposed that there was some bad things going on but if you didn't have that that push in the late 60s and in the 70s for hey killer whales probably shouldn't be getting massacred the killer whale might very well not be here the humpback whale might very well not be here so i think sometimes in the messaging of we need to shut this down, this is terrible. We lose sight of the good that was done along the way and the attention that was brought to a good cause. And I, I saw a comment online that I thought, how asinine is that? Which is, oh, you could just look things up on the internet. You don't need to see these animals in a zoo. Great, let's just, just do that with everything. Um, have I ever been to Italy? Sure, I've seen pictures. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's basically, there's a lot of water and there's, uh, I assume that a lot of buildings are leaning um because yeah i've been to italy because i've seen pictures of it it's exactly the same thing um the moon walked on it uh watch videos of men walking on the moon totally walked on it it's exactly the same i totally understand the the, the lunar surface the moon walking on it would not give me a better idea of it and and going to italy in person and the sights and sounds and smells of italy would not make a difference so yeah the tactile actual touching a stingray and actually being in the room and and seeing these creatures it doesn't do anything it doesn't it doesn't help anything and it definitely doesn't make you think of things a little bit differently where you might come out of an aquarium going you know that was that was really fun and i remember when i was a kid and i i didn't get splashed by skeena because skeena would do the you know the splash with her her fin but uh people not too far from me sure did got absolutely drenched and that was something that me as i think i was like five or six i never forgot and i un i understand the conservationists the conservationists that have come out since then i said oh no there's bad things going on and i agree but without that experience as a kid would i still have that that you know that feeling i get with with whales in general when i see them maybe not and now we see them in 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 the wild all the time and it's not considered to be a huge deal around here although it's a nice tourist trap thing and you know, off the coast here there, there's a reason why there's an orca on vancouver's hockey team and i know people say oh, they're not the orcas right but you know orcas are, are a big tourist thing in in vancouver and in the surrounding area and so it makes total sense to me the hockey team has an orca on their jersey at the time i didn't like it because they were on orca bay but it's fine
it's not a big deal. Um, so here's to hoping the aquarium reopens. Um, any any ideas for support? Anything anybody finds on how to support uh, the Vancouver Aquarium? Let me know in the comment section below. And again, if you've had an experience with the Vancouver Aquarium, comment it below. Because uh, again, I th I think it's an important place. I think it's important in in Vancouver's history. Uh, Sixty four years is a long time, and uh, I I remember every trip I took there as a kid. It was fascinating to me as a kid. And it, it makes me wonder, you know, are we going to see a domino effect where other um, other educational places in Vancouver might start to go by the wayside as well, which would be a shame. There are a lot of really cool things to do in Vancouver. And when people ask me, they say, we're in Vancouver, what would you recommend? I always say, um, if you can get up to um, the Bloedel Conservatory to do that, the planetarium, it's fantastic. If you can go to Science World, Science World is great. If you can go to Stanley Park, and I would mention the aquarium. I would say if you can go to the Vancouver Aquarium, it is it is great. If you have kids, it's fantastic. And so it's a shame that one of those places I would recommend people to go is, is falling by the wayside. And here's to hoping that they can reopen at some point. There is no guarantee. There's no guarantee that with this downtime and with the amount of issues they're having, these animals may end up getting shipped off to other zoos. They may end up being in that situation where they have to. And, um, you know... Hopefully their conservation attempts will continue. The The alarming thing I heard too is that there's a lot of rescues that they take in and they're going to have to cut that back as well because of the staffing being cut back, which is too bad because the rescues that they've done, I don't think there's necessarily been that as, as much attention paid to that because again, it's it's I guess it's just easier to pick it and get mad at something than to actually you know, do the full-on investigation of, of what what they do that's that's good. And, and you know, again... The otters seemed perfectly happy when I was there last time. So there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And, and I'm throwing this on the entertainment guy. I know this isn't along the lines of the same videos that I, I do discussions on on this channel. But this was entertaining for me as a kid. This was one of my main forms of entertainment before we had internet or anything like that. If you told Shannon at age 6 or 7, hey, we're going to the aquarium, I was... In the car. Done. Okay, cool. I'm in the car. Let's go. Let's go now. Why aren't we at the aquarium now? Let's go now. Why aren't we there now? So um, hopefully it's reopened uh, soon. But the longer that the shutdown goes on, the longer that, um, that we're in this economic slowdown, the harder it's going to be for a place like this to reopen. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.